<laughs> Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. We're already laughing because that's My glasses just are fogging already. <laughs> that's just how we are. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so we, got, we, got we also we just went out for a walk and it's really sunny out, so we're very energized. Very energized, a lot of vitamin D. <laughs> so much it. energy. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have some adult books, a couple of teen books, a bunch of kids books this week. We're ready. We're ready. It was very exciting because we came yes. we came in and there were two boxes. Two waiting boxes for us. waiting for us, and there's even so adult nice. books for next week already. Ooh, ooh. I know. All right. I know. So some so of these aren't ready good. today yet? No, are these are. They're but already next, today. But oh, I mean, oh, so are in our box. Them they were week. in our box. Okay. Yeah, we'll save them for you next week. You want to people when they can't no. check them out? Okay. No, right. I don't want to be that mean. <laughs> <laughs> today. Oh, not today. All right, let's hop into it. I think a lot of people are going to be really excited for the one that is top on my pile. Even like yeah. as I was pressing the live button, Maria was like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exciting. So many people read, watched, were obsessed with hidden figures. Well, this is Catherine. Johnson's memoir, My Remarkable Journey. Oh, that's awesome. And it says on top, Catherine Johnson's personal story never gets old and never fails to inspire. And I And look at the back picture. You have to show the back picture. Uh, is that her getting her medal of honor? Yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, go women. Yeah, or medal of freedom. Girl power. I guess freedom. Girl right. power. Um in 2015, at the age of 97, Katherine Johnson became a global celebrity for her pioneering work as a mathematician on NASA's first flights into space. In this memoir, she shares her personal journey from child prodigy to NASA human computer, centered around the basic tenets of her life, no one is better than you, education is paramount, and asking questions can break barriers. This heartfelt memoir captures the many facets of this unique woman, the curious daddy's girl, pioneering professional, and sage elder. I just think, yeah, <sighs> her, story, her story is wonderful, and I'm, I'm super excited. I know, a lot of people are gonna be really excited yeah. to read this one, yeah. so it's here. Just so impressive. <laughs> Such an amazing um, this one, we keep saying that we I just love the words. <laughs> the word is great. This is called the gunkle. It's just a fun word. <laughs> and first, I also love how like bright this cover is. It is very bright. It's very fun. Very bright. Very yeah. fun. Very good. Oh, the little dog. I didn't see the yeah. little dog. Okay. So, um, Patrick O'Hara is out of his league. Patrick, or gay uncle Patrick, G-U-P for short, or I guess Gunkle, um, <laughs> has always loved his niece, Maisie, and nephew, Grant. That is, he loves spending time with them when they come out to Palm Springs for week-long visits or when he heads home to Connecticut for the holidays. But in terms of caretaking and relating to two children, no matter how adorable, Patrick is honestly overwhelmed. So when tragedy strikes and Maisie and Grant lose their mother and Patrick's brother has a health crisis of his own, Patrick finds himself suddenly taking on the role of primary guardian. Despite having a set of, a set of gunkle rules ready to go, <laughs> Patrick has no idea what to expect, having spent years barely holding on after the loss of his great love, a somewhat stalled acting career, and a life that's not so suitable to a six and nine-year-old. Quickly realizing that parenting, even if temporary, isn't solved with treats and jokes, Patrick opens his eyes to a new sense of responsibility and the realization that sometimes even being larger than life means you're unfailingly humor. Uh, human. Oh. The next line says the word humor, so I was looking ahead, but... You know what, I think, I was like thinking as you're reading it, I'm like, another word that we could call it is the funkle. The fun uncle. The funkle. <gasps> the fun uncle. No more yeah, funkle heard, for you, mister. I've heard, I've heard <laughs> that before, too. The, the funkle. <laughs> nope, I love no that. more of that. <laughs> Nora Roberts has a new one out. This is called Legacy, and I just really like the cover because I think I'd like to be there. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like I we've would. done puzzles like that. <laughs> it looks like a puzzle we've done. Or, I've done probably, I've probably have several. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have several of these in puzzle form underneath my coffee yep. table. Different seasons. <laughs> um, this one is interesting because this author is known for his young adult works. Oh, uh, yeah. David Yoon has an adult book called Version Zero. Mm -hmm. um, you know, his wife, Nicola Yoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. Everything, everything. People, oh the gosh, son is also a star. So popular, yeah. um, super popular. And so I love that he has now started putting his writing out there too. They're popular in the teen room, and I love seeing that he's branching into adult works. Um, 
So this is, this is like a, a sci-fi kind of Thought thing. So. Yeah. The cover. <laughs> the cover makes it look sci-fi, yeah. Max is a data whiz at the social media giant Ren, and he has always believed in technology's potential to make the world a better place. But when he gets uh, <laughs> when he gets a first-hand <laughs> glimpse of the dark side of the business, I feel like there's a big dark side yeah. to social media yeah. business. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> He questions what his company does with the data they collect. Good for him. Oh, good. All and right. he's fired. Oh, then blackballed across the tech industry. Disillusioned, Max turns to his former coworker and secretly the love of his life, Akiko. They decide to get even by rebooting the internet. Can you do that? After Let's all, all the way Let's set it back to zero. <laughs> Let's go back. After all, in order to fix things, sometimes you have to break them. But when Max and Akiko join forces with a reclusive tech baron, they learn that breaking things can have unintended and catastrophic consequences. A wild ride, a blazingly paced thriller that asks the question, can we save ourselves from the very real perils of a virtual world? Okay, first of all, I don't even like science fiction and that sounds really good. Right? It's like it's like like more of a social commentary. Right. It's it's definitely really it's not like sci-fi. Right. It, it's but it is like very techy and like future oriented. Okay. That sounds so. like something right off the bat that I would like. Yeah. Um. And uh, second of all, you sure it's fiction. I know. <laughs> it kind of well, sounds. That's, it kind of sounds like it's real. That's, on the advanced <laughs> praise on the back, it says David Yoon holds up a mirror to our ways of life. I called it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it sounds like it could totally be a real story. Um, and this one sounds really interesting. I like the cover, too. Yeah, it has like a retro um, 20s feel oh. or something. This is called A Peculiar Combination, and then the O is a little combination lock. Mm. But, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. A cracking good mystery is what this that is. Must be English. Yeah. <laughs> it's cracking good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, First rule, don't lose your concentration. Electra McDonnell and her family earn their living outside the law. Breaking into the homes of the rich and picking the locks on their safes may not be condoned by British law enforcement, <laughs> but with World War II in full swing, Uncle Mick's locksmith business just can't pay the bills anymore. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. <laughs> Second rule, don't make mistakes, of course. Um, so when Uncle Mick receives a tip about a safe full of jewels in an empty house, he and Ellie can't resist. All is going as planned until the pair is caught red-handed. But instead of arresting them, government official Major Ramsey has an offer. Either Ellie agrees to help him break into a safe and retrieve blueprints critical to the British war effort, or he turns her over to the police. That seems like a no-brainer. Third rule, don't mm. get caught. Uh-oh. Ellie doesn't care for the Major's imperious manner, but she has no choice. However, when they break into the house, they find the safe open and empty and a German spy dead on the floor. Soon, Ellie and Major Ramsey are forced to put aside their differences to unmask the double agent and stop Allied plans from falling into enemy hands. The first in a charming new Ooh, series. Oh, I love the first in a new series. I so know. I want to go back and like start all over again. A delightful mystery filled with spies, murder, romance, and wit. This sounds perfect. I know. For, it for, sounds like, so good. Mystery lovers and so, yeah, it sounds really good. I know. And I, I should hate recommend start, this to I hate having to like go back and like find you know read yeah. old. I like to start new. Start fresh. Start fresh. People love a good yeah. series starter. Um, next, teen books. So everybody knows Dumplin. Same author, Julie Mur Murphy, wrote Pumpkin. Ooh, and I love the spine. Yeah, that's really nice. Very beautiful. Oh, we love to see it. All right. Um, Waylon Russell Brewer is, I love when they do the full yeah, name. Yeah, that's quite a name. <laughs> <laughs> is a fat, openly gay boy stuck in the small West Texas town of Clover City. His plan is to bide his time until he could graduate, move to Austin with his twin sister Clementine, and finally go full Waylon so that he can live his Julie, the hills are alive with the sound of music, Andrew's truth. I feel like a lot of people want to live that truth. Yeah, that's actually not a bad truth, actually. <laughs> um, so when Clementine deviates from their master plan right after Waylon gets dumped, he throws caution to the wind and creates an audition tape for his favorite TV drag show, Fiercest of Them All. 
What he doesn't count on is the tape getting accidentally shared with the entire school. As a result, Waylon is nominated for prom queen as a joke. Clem's girlfriend, Hannah Perez, also receives a joke nomination for prom king. Waylon and Hannah decide that there's only one thing to do, run and leave high school with a bang, a very glittery bang. <laughs> Along the way, Waylon discovers that there's a lot more to running for prom court than campaign posters and plastic crowns, especially when he has to spend so much time with the very cute and infuriating prom king nominee, Tucker Watson. Waylon will need to learn that the best plan for tomorrow is living for today, especially with the help of some fellow queens. Oh, that's a good plan. It sounds like fun yes. and it just sounds like yeah. it's going to be just like a nice story because hopefully they all help each other out and they get to know so. each other. Yes. And yeah, yeah, I like it. I was like, yeah, I do really like the cover. The cover is beautiful. And it says this year prom's a drag. <laughs> And I okay. feel like that's great. Like, Julie Murphy is definitely um, reaching out to a, a group of kids who maybe don't see themselves in literature that much. And all those, the drag shows yep. are really popular right now. It's such mm -hmm. a big thing in culture. So I just think that this was such a good idea for a book. Yeah, I think so, too. Be fun. Um, this one actually came out last week, but I forgot to show it. Um, Reese's YA book club. Oh. It's a Reese's YA book club book. All right. Um, this is called Tokyo Ever After, and I love the cover design. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really, really pretty. I love that, that 3D. Can we do that on the Cricut? I don't know. <laughs> Can we do Ooh, I, uh, It's a little advanced for us. A lot us. of paper cutting there for us. <laughs> Izumi Tanaka has never really fit in. It's not easy being Japanese-American in her small, mostly white, Northern California town. Raised by a single mother, Izumi, or Izzy because it's easier that way, has always felt it's been her and her mom against the world. But then Izumi discovers a clue to her previously unknown father's identity. And he's none other than the crown prince of Japan. <gasps> Whoa, talk about a, like a princess story, that's okay. Which means outspoken irreverent Izzy is literally a princess. Wow, okay, all right. <laughs> In a whirlwind, Izumi travels to Japan to meet the father she never knew and discover the country she's always dreamed of. But being a princess isn't all ball gowns and tiaras. There are conniving cousins, a hungry press, a scowling but handsome bodyguard who just might be her soulmate, Okay. and thousands of years of tradition and customs to learn practically overnight. Izumi so soon finds herself caught between worlds and between versions of herself. Back home, she was never American enough, and in Japan, she must prove she's Japanese enough. Will Izumi crumble under the weight of the crown, or will she live out her fairy tale happily ever after? Hmm. Sounds like a lot of fun. It does sound like fun. And I j again, it's just another one of those like getting to know myself kind of teen books where, you know, we just and kind a bit of, of an escape. I mean, come yeah. on. Most of us aren't going to find out we're princesses. No. I don't know. I like it seems I very I like by now, but... princess diaries, but more modern for yeah. like, you know, I mean, we don't Ooh, realize it, but that book came out quite a while ago. A long time ago. Yeah. In this, the late 90s. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah a long time ago. So this is more for today's teens. Again, it's more diverse, it's updated, and it's just yeah. kind of like that classic story of, am I a princess? I feel like one. Sometimes. Sometimes. I was like, I don't sometimes know Sometimes I, I feel like Cinderella like yeah. within the ashes. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like Cinderella at the ball. Mostly I'm the, I'm the ashes Cinderella. I'm usually the Cinderella the cinder who's part lost of her shoes. shoes. <laughs> That's usually me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Are we ready for some pictures? We books? are ready. All right. First one on the top pile, My America by Karen Katz. Um, this illustrator and author has done a ton of kids books with the cute little round faces and, you know, mostly she just toddler, like baby, baby books. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is for older kids, slightly older kids. And it's really just so neat. It says children come to live in America from many different countries and for many different reasons. Some come from far away and some come from very near. And so it's a, just a celebration of immigrants and immigrant stories. And um, they've got kids from all over the world coming to America. And here we see them arriving. And the, she does a lot of this, like, I guess, uh, what do you call this? Like a cut paper or collage, oh, like a collage. Mm -hmm. And you see then the collage is all of these different ways of coming here from all over the world. And I just think it's a really fun, nice story. Um, probably almost good for like summertime because of 4th of July or something like that. Memorial, you know, just not Memorial Day. Yeah, 4th of July. Um, coming up soon, so I thought that was kind of a neat celebration of being American. 
two other summary stories that I thought were really great. Ooh. This one is so fun. It's called It Began With Lemonade and it's got the classic kid lemonade stand. I love the cover. It's so cute and it's so bright and colorful with these gorgeous end papers. Oh, those are nice. Um, and it's all about, well here, let's read a little bit. On scorching hot summer's day, at the river's edge, a young girl calls out, lemonade, lemonade, a glass for you, half price for two. Much to her surprise, around the bend comes all sorts of customers. Each one is larger and stranger and thirstier than the last. So it's a gloriously illustrated tale of perseverance, pluck, and creativity, an ode to the magic of summertime. And uh, there you see her making her lemonade. <laughs> I guess it was too tart here. That's what I'm guessing that's the, oh, that's tart face. So you go on. And it's got these great scenes. Again, a lot of diversity. Uh, <laughs> somebody's dressed as a lemon with the lemonade sign. Um, and just all the fun, funky characters oh. that come and start buying her lemonade. Yeah. Oh. They sort of drift off into a bit of a fantasy, but just so colorful and nice. And um, whenever I see a lemonade stand, I really try hard to buy to buy something from the buy kids. Buy local. Buy local from the kids because it's just so cute. And um, so that, I just thought that was a great one. And another summer story, when Lola visits. Um, and Lola it says, what does summer mean to you? For one young girl, summer is the season of no school, of days spent at the pool, of picking golden limes off the trees. I wish I had a lime tree. But summer doesn't start until her Lola, her grandmother from the Philippines, comes for her annual visit. And it's just Ooh. such a nice family story about um, you know exciting when you have to live far apart and you can come together and spend some magical time together and uh, just just great sweet illustrations and um, a family story and that's, that's what I so love cute. yeah I love the colors I love the idea of how how the grandma is such an important part of the family there's so much respect for the grandma just really nice and how it's something she looks forward to every year. That's really so sweet. Hopefully you have some felt relatives visiting from far away and um, we're just coming for a while or you're going maybe you're going somewhere this summer so it's just a fun oh. thing to look forward to in the summertime. It is very sweet. Yeah sweet so I story. think that's a nice one. The only nonfiction book I have today is Stamped for Kids. So Stamped came out last year by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi and it was super popular a teen mm -hmm. book checked out all the time holds yep. all the time um and now it's in children's version and it's much shorter and definitely yep. a lot more white space um, easier to read easier broken to down read, a little better some pictures you know, pictures and you probably find in a teen book um so if you're looking for a stamped for younger kids that are interested in learning about anti-racism there's a story for you that's actually uh, not a story <laughs> not a story <laughs> true story <laughs> okay so we have great new graphic novels they're always coming out oh, my favorites. and I was really looking forward to this one Paul oh Caso, just because I love the name I love the idea that it's this dog who runs around and he's so smart he does like errands for his family oh, yeah. and apparently uh, a very lonely little girl sees him and decides to tell everybody it's her dog um, and uh, so she's excited because now everybody in her class wants her to meet the dog and it says, what could go wrong, right? Except it starts off as a chihuahua-sized lie and quickly Aww. grows into a Great Dane-sized lie when Animal Control receives complaints about a dog roaming the streets off-leash. With Picasso's freedom at stake, is Joe willing to spill the truth and risk her new friendships? So kind of, you know, like a, I don't know how to, like almost like a, like a story, you know, where she has to decide what's more important to her. Um, so it's super cute. Um, and I'm pretty sure she's gonna take the dog, but I don't, I don't know, I didn't read it. But I'm gonna guess she to puts do. the dog's safety above making new friends because your dog is your best friend. Yeah. Um, so just a really great story and uh, super, uh, super adorable. And I think that a really lot of kids cute. are gonna like that one. <laughs> so cute. Yes, and now a new, I don't remember what number we're up to, I think three or four of the Cardboard Kingdom. Oh. Super popular graphic novel series um, about kids in a neighborhood and they have this whole fantasy uh, where they're superheroes and it's just a great, story um so they're and they're they're, they're scientists heroes and sleuths <laughs> in the cardboard kingdom so another another sequel that um kids have really liked those and this one just looked really fun just pretend by tori sharp um i'm not sure if she's done other ones i feel like the style of illustration looks familiar to me um and this story is about a girl who is going through a divorce in her family and she escapes through books and um, Go yeah, exactly. Wow. So she's 
and I guess there she is telling friends about all the books and there's some of the characters from her books that she loves and I, I you know I just I read I read something I think um oh who Salman Rushdie wrote a, a thing to the times a, a like an op-ed and he was talking about the importance of books in, in childhood and how you grow yeah. with them and how like you might put a book aside when you're little and then you read it when you're a little bit older and you know just how and I just think this kind of captures that how important yeah. books are to kids and to grown-ups too yes um but with kids they they kind of grow with them so anyway i thought that was a really fun one it's a nice yeah. yeah and last but not least i just started getting this series because it's so cute but i think so i think this is the number three maybe and i have the other two um it's by it's called pizzazz and it's a little girl who is a superhero and what I love about it is it's that combo again of like the pictures. Oh, I love with the, the white layout. space and the illustrations are just so adorable. And they're almost on at pretty much every page. So not too much text, but still longer than some of the other ones we've had. This is almost 200 pages. So again, for the stamina, you know, right. this can build stamina. Your kid can actually read 200 pages, but it's not 200 pages of dense text. It's uh, a not lot even of just stamina, but like yeah. confidence, you know, yep, exactly. maybe some of our younger readers who they can definitely do this one read this book feel yeah. like they've read a big book but it's it's really at yep. their level but yep. it may encourage them to read other big yep. books and you just can't resist this artwork oh my gosh i really love it isn't it beautiful <gasps> and i feel like even like with the dots on it it's to make yeah. it look like an old comic book or something <gasps> it's just a, a great style of illustration that's um really fun and oh approachable. i love it and i love a great uh, girl superhero so i think that this is going to be i think it's going to be popular and I think what happened was I saw the review for the third one. I'm like, how do I not have one and two? So I bought all of them just to make sure we oh could gosh, be caught up. Oh my gosh, I love so it. So this will be the newest, I believe, in the coming. So. Yeah. Pizzazz is definitely a good name. It's a good name, too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I hope somebody will check that one out because I think it's precious. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> yep. And that's it. All right, that's that, it is, that is it. We have gone through all of our books for today. Of course, yep. there are plenty of other new releases. I mean, there are hundreds that come out every week so if you know what you're looking for if you're looking for one of these go on to uh buckles or give us a call uh, yep. we'll get you some books yep. we'll get you hooked up yes definitely <laughs> we're book pushers here so yes. <laughs> all right that's it for us this week we'll see you next time bye, bye.